Uno, dos, tres, cuatro. When did you hear? Just this morning. What was that then? Phil shot dead in Florida. <laughs> oh, come on. Now what, ten graves? Because it's pussy on a stick. A lot of funerals at graveyards, and if you see a Sheila at a funeral, the chances are she's single, or at the very least, confused. The ladies are all wearing black, which is very slimming, and can make even a hefty moose look like a randy swan. Of course, in these kinds of situations, subtlety is key. Keep your head down, look concerned, then pounce. If you play your cards right, a comforting hug can soon turn into a grope. The interior of the church will often be left unattended, so it's easy to steal in there for a crafty shafty. One word of caution though, do try and take other people's feelings into account. Other than that, give it a go. What have you got to lose? Do you do poison? No sir, just cakes. This is a patisserie, sir. How many cakes could a human being eat? I don't know, it depends how hungry they are. Very hungry, really very hungry indeed. Well, I suppose maybe five little ones. What if we made them eat more, like by force? What if we made them eat six really big cakes? Could they burst? Could a cake hurt a person? Uh, I never... Is really... a baguette harder than a skull? No. What would happen if you got a baguette and hammered it down someone's throat with a flan? Could it puncture a lung? Um, I've never really, um... Do you do gingerbread men? Yes. What's the biggest gingerbread person you could bake? One that was life-size, one that looked like this? I don't think... How much sugar does it take to rot a person's teeth? Like, totally, so they couldn't be identified by dental records. Quite a lot, I should think so. Would you like an apple turnover? Oh, cheeky. Is it poisoned? No. How hot's that coffee? Piping, sir. Good idea. I'll smash our bloody brains out. Will you be quiet, please, Year 6? We have a long journey ahead of us. I have no intention of putting up with this racket. <laughs> Sit down, don't touch the vent nozzles, or you can get off. <laughs> Shut it! Thanks, mate. You want to have my job? <laughs> so, what do you teach? English. Oh, English? Right, what? Authors? I know a good story about an author. You heard of Milton? John Milton, yeah. The 16th, no, 17th century writer. Well, he was blind, as you know. But what a lot of people don't know is that he used to get sexual favours off his friend's wife because she felt sorry for him. So he'd be sitting there writing his poem and she'd be uh, giving him a wank. Oh, uh, really? Absolutely true. Eureka! Which is philosophy for higher. You're watching BBC A-level fun size no turning back choice and this is the philosophy zone. But first of all, our philosophy is don't panic. So don't. Help is at hand. Now, philosophy is the study of why stuff is like what it is and what other people have thought about why stuff is like it is. Philosophy was invented by the Greeks. That's not the Greeks you meet when you go on holiday there, but the ancient Greeks who were older and better and mainly gay, which we think is why they died out. But before they died out, they found the solution to everything except photocopying, which is probably why most of it, apart from a few old plays, got burnt. Philosophy is still very much alive today and is particularly healthy in the hands of such modern day thinkers as Eric Cantona and Rob Newman. So let's see how these facts could help you in a typical A-level question. You've got to laugh, haven't you? Discuss with reference to Plato, Nietzsche and Wittgenstein. Handy hint, Plato, Nietzsche and Wittgenstein were all philosophers, so don't panic, you're in good company. Secondly, try not to write anything along the lines of philosophy does my head in. If you can persuade the examiners that it doesn't do your head in, he'll probably give you an A. 
In your final paragraph, remember to work out why everything's like it is. Eureka! Say, that beagle's a fighter, isn't he? So, how to find a cure for cancer? How's little Timmy coming along, Chester? Well, he's not looking too clever, Will. But then, remember, he has got cancer. Well, he ought to have cancer for the number of fags he smoked. Yep, he's been chuffing away 20 a day for the past week, which is the equivalent, for a large man, of having smoked all of the fags in the entire world. The sad thing is, he's still smoking. You'd think he'd have the sense to quit. No, we're just going to have to use him to try and find a cure for cancer. Now, Wilf, you were wondering whether or not batting him across this table tennis table might do the trick. Well, Chester, I was thinking that it might be a cure for cancer. And, you know, we'll never find out that it isn't until we've done it to him. Shall I serve? Hello. I want to kill my wife. I mean, do you do lilos? No, sir, just poison. This is a poison shop, sir. Now I'm confused. No, I don't know. Why do women have legs? Because otherwise they'd leave a trail like slugs. <laughs> hey, you like that one, do you? Do you like that? I've got loads. Here's one. What do you call a lesbian with a club foot? What do you call what, sorry? What do you call a lesbian with a club foot? Hang on, I'll tell you, kids. Oi, kids! What do you call a lesbian with a club foot? Gee, what's the matter, Pixel Guy? I don't feel like it, that's all. Oh, come on, Pixel Guy. You'll love it once you get in. Surfing's groovy. Yeah, actually, I don't think it is that groovy. Hey, Pixel Guy, you're cool, but you're so standoffish. Sorry. Hey, listen, you don't have to put your head under the water. What? Nothing, nothing, nothing. nothing. Well, come on, everyone. Okay. Hey. So the doctor says to the puff, I know, mate, but at least it'll show you what your arse is for. <laughs> yeah, you teach her like that one. <laughs> now, Chester, did you ever see a worse case of self-indulgence in a mouse than this? Never, Wilf. Never once. But apart from that, little Michael here has to be the most self-indulgent mouse in the scientific community. What did you do to cure the first one? Well, pretty much the same as what we're trying here, but I can't for the life of me remember whether it worked. Well, give it another go, that's what I say. Imagine how grateful the world will be if we find a cure for self-indulgence. Off you go, then. I do remember now. No, it didn't work. It, it is stolen, yeah, yeah. I, th I thought that. If, if I can just explain, what he's done is, he's not bought that car, but he's driving it. He, he's driving it even though he's, he's not bought it. See, he's, he, he's driving it without the knowledge or permission of... He stole it. He stole it, yeah, he stole it. 
but it's it's even more complicated than that because what he's done is he's he's taken right you see that number plate on that car that that's not on that car see it's not on it because well i mean it's on it but it doesn't belong it doesn't belong on it it because what he's done is he's taken that plate off another car vehicle car yeah car so yeah what he's done is he's done that and he's put that on his f-reg bluebird except i can tell it's not an f-reg it's uh, a d-reg because it's a different model d or e have they stopped making topic was great, Pixel Guy. You should have come. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Hey, Pixel Guy, what are you eating? Chalk ice. Oh, uh -huh. cool! Hey, hey, Pixel Guy, I think you got some chalk ice on your, uh, on... What? Oh. Nothing, Thanks. nothing. Oh, Jeremy, could I talk to you about... Oh, you've got something on the... Just... All very well in the playground, but as a senior manager, I am what I wear. Now, the situation as it stands is... He's on to us. He's on to us, yeah, and we're on to him. And because he knows that, that's why he's driving away. And because we know that, that's why we're driving towards, you know, motion towards. Takes the accusative. Yeah. You see, what he's done is, he's taken his car... Well, it's not his car, it's... Uh, Whose car is it? We don't know. We're right, we don't know whose car it is. Forget that, it's complicated enough. But he's taken the theft, the car, belonging to the other people. The innocent victim. The children, yeah, because it's always the children who suffer in these cases. They're the victims. He's taken the children's car. What a children is doing with a car, I don't know. You know, I mean, that's not our job. That'll be decided by MPs and religious leaders. Fatwa. Yeah. But he's he's taken that car, and it's himself he's letting down in the end, because, you know, at this rate, he's going to crash and die and be dead, maybe. Whereas, you know, what he's done with the, the theftery, the swap plate swap, the the car, the stolen, you know, it all adds up to, at most, at most, go to prison. But, but not death. Not in this country. In the Middle Ages? In the Middle Ages, yeah. Gibbets. But not now. Well, yes, now. But ideally, not. I think Starburst's a better name. Oh, you know, you surprised me, Joe. I was saying to Daisy here, I wouldn't have had you down as a ballet man. Surprise you? Do I, do I really? Oh, no. No, I love them all. Them all. I, mean, I love the Straminski and the Chaikinski and the Jaminski and the, um, the, uh, Rigolego. That's it, the Rigolego and the big fat women in armour with the helmets and the horns. Oh, boy, do I love ballet. <laughs> oh, do you like opera? Oh, sure, sure. Yeah, I love to see a man jumping about in a pair of stockings and a woman dressed like a big... Big uh, duck, that's it, they look like ducks. I mean, if a man wants to jump about in a pair of tights revealing his private parts to the world, that's his concern, and nobody else's. It's not perverted or disgusting. Who says this? I mean, if a man wants to dance like a big girl, that's his business, that's not uh, perversion, that's, that's democracy. Oh boy, do I love ballet. <laughs> do you, um, do you go often? Oh yeah, sure, sure. I go uh, maybe um, two, three times a day sometimes. Oh, some people think it's silly or stupid or whatever, not me. I say if people want to have fun, let them. Let them, I say. <laughs> Boy, do I love ballet. <laughs> hmm. A lot of puffs in this queue, aren't there? Hello and welcome to Outdoor We. This week I'm joined by singer-songwriter Martin Kitchen. Martin, hi. Good to see you. After you. So, Martin, tell me, why are we here? Well, this is the bandstand in Victoria Park in Marlow in Buckinghamshire, and this is where I used to come and watch my grandfather play the French horn. Uh-huh. And was it him that partly inspired you to become a musician? Uh, yeah, in part, but also... Um, sorry, I'm, I'm finding it a bit difficult to go. Yeah, I had noticed that actually, Martin. Um, don't worry, that happens all the time here on Outdoor We. Um, just relax. Mind if I carry on? No, no. OK, so it was partly him that inspired you and partly, of course, the music scene in the 70s when you grew up. 
Well, yeah, I mean, that, that was important, um, because... So I, I, I really feel a bit silly. Am I... Um, am I am I putting you off? No, really. Um. Okay. Oh. <sighs> there, I finished now. So, what were your main influences at the time? Well, um, I guess that would be. Um, so, sorry, do you, do you mind if I put my penis away? I, I don't feel very comfortable. I'll make an effort. <sighs> hey, pixel guy! Look, that girl's staring at you. I think she really likes you. Why is that then? Well, you know, she's kind of looking at you. I think you should go talk to her. Hey, why is that then? Uh, well... Come on, let's have it. Well, you know, because she... It's the pixels, isn't it, Tina? Oh, yeah, it's all just... Oh, look, there's another pixel person. Let's get them together. They'll really fancy each other. You make me sick. Hey, pixel guy, chill out. Tina didn't mean any harm. And why is it with all this pixel guy shit? I find it really offensive. My name is Ray! Packet of king-size Rizzlers, please, mate. What colour? White. Like your rollies, do you? Jazz. I love, I love jazz. That'll be my taxi. Good evening, Camden. Yeah! And now, please give a big cheer to Pussy on a Stick. Yeah! Introducing Roger Green. Yeah! John Cassells. Yeah! Jimmy DeRue. And Richard Drake. Oh, that woman is extraordinary. Hi. Hi. I'm Sasha Solomon. OK, I think I have an exclusive for you. This must be the oldest woman on English TV. We thought it was Helen Mirren, but this woman could be her mother. Madam, how old are you? A lady never discusses her age. Not even an old lady? OK, and I'm guessing here, am I right in thinking you have never had a facelift? No, I have never had one. <laughs> Joan Rivers, take heed. The British are a wondrous people. In this country, you can grow old gracelessly, and it's perfectly OK. Do you have warts? No. Oh, do you know Sora Heard? Oh, she's ancient. I love her. Mm. <laughs> she sags for Britain. What an ambassador. I do know her. <laughs> Listen up, America. This unadorned, unlifted woman is on British TV and she doesn't bother anybody. She doesn't have to hide out in Florida. And as far as Sasha Solomon is concerned, that's dandy. Are you done? Oh, do you know Judy Dench? Oh, she's like a little potato, an Oscar-winning potato. Oh, I love her. She's so small and wrinkled. It's like a little prune, a prune potato. <laughs> this is Sasha Solomon, broadcasting from Worcestershire, near London. Oh, thank you. Well, that all seems in order. So, to finance a holiday in St Lucia, you wish to borrow £4,000 to be repaid at 100 a month over a period of four years. If that's all right, yeah, I, uh, I really need the break. Well, I, I think we can probably... Good afternoon, sir. Roger, Roger, it's an emergency! You have to come home straight away! Sparky, Quickly, I... now! We haven't got a moment to lose! Sparky, I'm in a meeting with my bank manager. But it's terribly urgent! World War Three has broken out! What? World War Three! It's terrible! Thermonuclear war, Roger! We have to go home and paint all the windows white or we'll die! And where did you hear this? Was it on the television? It was on Dr Twinkie's Magic Clockwork Radio. Dr Twinkie himself made the grim announcement. I'm afraid I wee-weed on the floor, Roger. In terror! Uh, uh, what did he say? He said that by six o'clock tonight, the Earth will be a flaming ball of death and despair. And it'll be very hot. I thought perhaps we could have a final game of water pistols before they drop the big one. I, uh, 
It's a tragedy of the First Order. Uh, look, I've got an important ISIS meeting I've got to attend. Yeah, sure. Maybe we can uh, next time. It's awful, isn't it? Are we going to have crisps and pop for tea? What? No. No, we're out of crisps. Oh, dearie me. Well, we'll have to go to the shops tomorrow, then. Uh, what do you mean, go to the shops tomorrow? There won't be a tomorrow. <laughs> Try and go on holiday without me, would you, me bucko? What a great wheeze! Oh, Sparky! Up your bum! <laughs> <laughs> where it all happened, we think. Now this is the main chamber leading all the way up to here, the batteries, the kitchens where the armour was kept. Now these would have been uh, bed chambers or servants quarters or the crypt or the garden or next door. We don't know. So, Fred, might it have looked like that? Uh, okay, um... let's cut the crap. We don't know what it is, what was here. Yet. I mean, it might have looked like that, or it might have been a church, or some houses, or a longboat, or a farm. But whatever it was, how old is it? Um, depends what it was. Right. Brilliant, Fred. Keep up the good work. We'll come and see what you're doing later. So, what we know is that there was something here before us. And what we think, what we hope, we don't know, is that whatever it was, there was probably, almost definitely, something before even that. Maybe an old field or just some rough ground. But crucially, it would have been an immensely old field. And that's going to be very exciting. OK, lads, it's safe to go, one at a time, OK? Right, go. Come on. Go. Yeah, go, go. Yeah, go. cross-section of a tiny part of the world. You see this stuff on the top? The grass? That's now. You can get that anywhere. That's not interesting. But beneath the grass, beneath the now, it looks like there's something buried here. I think I found something. I think I found something! It looks like some sort of cutting implement. Perhaps a rude arrowhead. Fred! Fred! Fred, put your tea down. I'm holding the past in my hand. What's this? What is it? That's, uh, that's a bit of rock. It's a stone. It's a bit of rock, it's a stone, but it's definitely older than the grass, which means that the mud underneath where I got the stone is older still. It's under, so it's older. That's the rule. And what's so exciting is that if we go even deeper, when we go even deeper, we'll be going into mud that is even older than that. Let's go! Papa, was for you to be proud of me. 
I don't care nothing about what they said about Mama. Come here, son. <laughs> you know I'll always be here to take care of you. <laughs> <laughs> Christ, that was good, wasn't it, though? That was a clip from Rod Bidecker's Oscar-winning portrayal of the mentally retarded character Sonny from the film Strength Through Joy. Wasn't that bit moving? The father still loves him, even though... Well, you know. Now, you won't believe this, but I'm actually joined here in Tinseltown by the star of the film, Rod Bidecker himself. And he's agreed to answer a few questions about how he gets to be such a clever actor and give such a marvellous portrayal. Rod, hi. Now, what sort of research did you do among mentally challenged people in order to give such a movingly convincing performance? Uh, uh, I did extensive research at the local hospital. Oh, God. Um, how did you get into the physical... Was it difficult to understand the day-to-day... -day? What about...? Thanks very much. OK, level with me, Fred. Are we going to find a Bronze Age village today? Um. well, I'm not sure, Tim. I mean, it's not very likely. Why not? Well, because most Bronze Age settlements were, you know, precursors to later larger settlements, and have therefore been built on. Oh, well, they just covered it over. They just built towns on it. Um, yeah, eventually towns. I mean, uh, Coventry, for example. Um, there was most probably a Bronze Age settlement there thousands of years ago. What, you mean some bastard just came along, saw a Bronze Age settlement and covered it up in Coventry? I don't fucking believe this. Keep digging. Right, so what we've learned is... Keep up! What we've learned... Is that there may be something really old just about anywhere, but they've probably covered it up with car parks or restaurants or houses. But whatever it's been turned into can't be as old as what it was, which... So I'm really gutted, actually. We just turn it off, Terry. Jesus. You're kidding. That is so sad. I know, I know. What's that, then? Felicity, electrocuted by her hairdryer. I don't care how good for morale these stunts are. I've got deadlines. 